Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Hamilton and today I'll be presenting the findings of scientist Sean Davidson and his partners on their work regarding the impact of microenvironments on the metabolic phenotype of lung cancer cells in culture compared to in living organisms. The publication is titled Environment Impacts the Metabolic Dependencies of RAS-Driven Non-Small Cell Lung Cancer. This work was conducted in connection with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and was published in the Cell Metabolism Journal under the Cell Press publication. The primary metabolic pathways involved in this study were the citric acid cycle, the lactic acid cycle, and glycolysis, most important of these being the citric acid cycle. Previously done research on in vitro lung cancer cells indicated a decreased fluxin through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and subsequently through the citric acid cycle, with preferential use of pyruvate going toward lactate production. Lung cancer cells in vitro seem to favor anaerobic metabolism even in aerobic conditions. This study, however, found that this does not hold true for lung cancer cells within living organisms. In vivo cells did not show preferential usage of glucose metabolism toward lactate, but rather an increased flux through both aerobic and anaerobic metabolism with an exceptional increase in glucose consumption overall. These observations indicate that the microenvironment surrounding the cancer cells is highly impactful toward the metabolic phenotype used by the cancer cells. As the title of this article states, the mutation responsible for the development of this cancer is in the RAS gene. RAS is an abbreviation for rat sarcoma, as the three mutated isoforms of this gene were first discovered in cancerous rats. RAS proteins are in the family of small GTP aces and are expressed in all animal cell lineages and organs. RAS proteins serve as a binary molecular switch for cellular growth and reproduction. As shown in the figure coming up on the screen now, RAS proteins are activated by receptor tyrosine kinases, which will in turn convert an inactive GDP into an active GTP. This active GTP thus begins a cascading reaction that allows the cell to grow and eventually divide. RAS-driven cancers are caused when any, any member of this activation process mutates. The most common mutation being a failure for the tyrosine kinase to deactivate, thus allowing RIS to constantly convert GDP into active GTP. This excess of GTP allows for uncontrolled cancerous cellular growth and reproduction. In other studies of cancerous cells, it was found that close to 25% of all cancer cells are the result of mutations in the RAS gene family, and close to 90% of certain cancers, such as prostate cancer, are due entirely to the mutations in the gene's isoforms. The term proliferation refers to the balance between cellular growth and death. Depending on the life stage of an organism, this ratio will be different. As the RAS isoforms become mutated and cancerous cells begin to form, the preferred ratio of reproduction to death is thrown off, and the cancer cells begin to grow and multiply in an out-of-control manner. Since these cells are growing and dividing so rapidly, there is an increased need for glucose catabolism in these cells, and the methods of catabolism are the same. The pyruvate that results from glucose being metabolized through glycolysis will either be directed through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex to become acetyl-CoA to be used in the citric acid cycle, or it will be used to create lactate in the subproduct NAD+. The initial hypothesis that Davidson and his team proposed was that tumor environment was vital to the phenotype used in metabolism in these cancerous cells. This hypothesis was based off of limited previous research on the topic due to the majority of cancer research being done in culture rather than in living organisms. The experiment that Davidson and his team came up with to test this hypothesis was to use three different types of tumors labeled LA2, KP, and KPS, which were infused into genetically altered mice with high levels of enriched blood plasma. After a steady state condition between the tumor infused lung and the non-cancerous lung were achieved, radioactively labeled C13 glucose was introduced. The team then monitored the metabolic fate of these labeled carbons to determine quantities and ratios of the carbons produced in both the cancerous and non-cancerous lung. A separate analysis of labeled glutamine was also done to analyze for the metabolic processes of glutamine to which is typically used to replenish the citric acid cycle in immediates through anaplerosis. The results of these tests showed a greatly increased overall metabolism of glucose and glutamine in the cancerous lung compared to the non-cancerous lung, as would be expected. 
However, the preferential usage of glucose for the synthesis of NAD plus and lactate was not observed as previously predicted by in vivo tests. There was an observed increase in flux of pyruvate through both the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and the subsequent citric acid cycle and lactate synthesis as well. And the figure coming up on the screen now, the metabolic fate of the C13 labeled glucose is charted out from both the normal and cancerous lung. The figure shows an overall increase in metabolized glucose as expected, as well as increased production of citric acid, of citrate and aspartate, showing an increased flux through the citric acid cycle. Aspartate is a secondary product of oxaloacetate in the way of amino acid synthesis. In the next figure coming up on your screen, a similar diagram is used to show the metabolic fates of the labeled glutamine introduced to the two lungs rather than glucose. There is only a marginal difference between the glutamine metabolism products between the non-cancerous and the cancerous lung, which can be seen in graphs C and D, with graph F showing a high preferential usage of glucose for these same intermediates rather than using glutamine. Contrary to the otherwise popular notion that tumor cells switch the preferential usage of glucose to anaerobic metabolism is challenged by the findings in this experiment. In separate experiments, this notion has also come under speculation due to similarly observed trends in glioplastomas, brain cancers, as well as hepatic cancers found in the liver. It is possible that there is a correlation between the synonymous increases in both fluxes between the citric acid cycle and lactase production. The byproduct of lactate production is NAD+, which can then cycle back to glycolysis to promote greater pyruvate production, as seen in the diagram here. This allows for even more flux through the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and then subsequently through the citric acid cycle. With the overall metabolism of glucose is drastically increased in cancer cells, Davidson states that each cell in the tumor is not using the glucose identically. Rather that certain parts of the tumor prioritize one method or the other. Some of the tumor will prefer lactate production while others will prioritize the citric acid cycle. Davidson observes also that similar to non-cancerous lung cells, that when put under significant oxygen deprivation conditions, even tumor cells will still only redirect minimal amounts of pyruvate to lactate production instead of the citric acid cycle. In conclusion, Davidson and his team were able to identify that the microenvironments surrounding cancer cells promoted by mutations in the RIS gene isoforms were integral to the metabolic phenotype used for the digestion of glucose and glutamine in non-smelled lung cancer cells in actual living organisms. Davidson also concludes that there are certainly many more environmental factors which affect the metabolic phenotype that are yet to be studied. Coming up on your screen now is a full bibliography of the work done by Davidson and his team. I would like to thank you for your time and wish you a great day.